All right, guys, welcome back. CFP here, and this is Survival Living. So today, we're going to be going over the Bucksaw construction. Now, this is something that I learned over there at Pathfinder Course. Um, I had seen other videos online, so I kind of had a general knowledge of how to actually manufacture these. But I got to learn the ins and outs of the manufacturing of the Bucksaw over there. Uh, that is a course I took over there at Pathfinder Scout Course. Uh, I do recommend, if you have the time or you're really serious about outdoor survival, you guys, you need to go over there and check them out. They're full of great instructors and a lot of great information. So, here lately, I've been showing more and more outdoor survival videos because that's what I enjoy doing. Um, and I had a video up where I was camping. I was using the buck saw. And I encourage everybody to attempt and to try to work on the outdoor survival skills. Um, but I had some videos submit, submitted to me of individuals that were manufacturing the buck saw. Uh, because I didn't really go into detail and you know I'm not here to down anybody um, I'm very excited that these people are actually trying to extend their outdoor survival experience and their knowledge um, unfortunately they were all wrong so I don't mean that in the wrong way but it, they were constructed wrong all right so we're gonna go ahead and break the down break this down and show you exactly how to make one of these um, I saw some videos submitted. They were made out of uh, other material that weren't solid wood. Um, they tied it together. You don't want to tie this together. This is supposed to be notched in place, and it works off of pressure from your windlass to apply pressure into the saw blade itself. And that's why there's no rocking in the saw, uh, buck saw. So let's go ahead and go over the construction of how to actually do this. Hopefully this does help the viewers that were attempting this and ran into issues. Um, so let's go ahead and try to fix this and let's go ahead and you know, use it as an educational thing. Like I said, I'm not downing anybody. Anybody that actually goes outside and tries to do this stuff, you got mad respect for me, all right? Because that's what we need to be doing. Everybody needs to be out there attempting to do this. Fortunately, me, I am able to sit here on YouTube and I get to actually instruct and show you guys what I know and hopefully help educate you further in that. So let's go ahead and get into it. Alright guys, so what we have here, we have our bucksaw blade. Alright, this is a 21 inch bucksaw blade. We also have a cross member, this is the soft wood material, unfortunately I don't know the name of the tree, but it works. And I also have cedar. These are going to be our uprights. I wanted something heavier, harder wood for my uprights because the last one I created was made out of softwood and it bent very easily. And then I started getting rocking over you know, a period of time. So, guys, what we're going to do is going to start the construction here. Basically, guys, we need to make our cross members with our upright. And then we're also going to be splitting and putting our bucksaw blade down here. We'll whip it, and then we'll find out exactly where we're going to put everything. We'll probably start right there. It's probably where our bucksaw blade is going to be. Uh, it's roughly, I don't know, about six inches up from the top of the blade. And then we'll also leave these uprights for now. We won't trim these down yet until we get our windlass tied up here. And then we can see if we're going to move our windlass up and down to keep any rocking and stuff. So first step, guys, what we need to do is we need to notch our material. Now I'm looking right now, I'm looking at our holes in our buck saw to see how much notching we can do. We're not going to go, you never go over half the distance of your upright. The reason why, once you get in that center piece of wood there, then you're going to wind up causing breakage. So you only want a little bit in there. So what we're going to do, I'm going to get my knife out. And we're going to try to level everything off as much as possible. I'm going to take my knife, I'm going to kind of scorn where we're going to put our notches for our upright and this way when we notch it out it'll be easy to do so I have our foldable saw out right now and I'm just putting little slots and stuff like that in our cut reason being it just makes it so much easier when you come back to notch it out just like this and then you can always trim it much easier once you've already got it notched out with your saw blade Like I said, we're not going too deep. We just want enough to snug up our cross member, have a place for it to rest. So our cross member is going to go in here, just like that. Might go just a little bit deeper just to give it a little bit more bite material. Now the next best thing to do is go ahead and match it up. Make sure that that is correct. That way it's all nice and level. 
when you're uh, doing this. Don't ever cut on your leg, guys. Always uh, pull your material away. Like I said, those are the main cuts on the outside for a cross member. If you do a couple more cuts on the inside, it makes it easier to remove that material. And take your knife and just pop it right out, just like that. Then you can dress it off. All right, guys, so we have our main frame, a rub buck saw. Right now we're concentrating on this lower end, guys. I'm not worried about what the uprights look like up top because that can be trimmed down. Now we want to measure out and make sure Sorry guys, we got camera gremlins again. So now we want to make sure that our eyelets for our saw blade is actually on the outside of our wood material. Okay, we have two eyelets on these. You always want to make sure at least at least the uh, center one can, you know, is within that. So I'm going for the outside one that will have enough room and everything else. So that's what we're looking at right now. Now with that being said, what we can do since this is level, we can actually look at the back of our buck saw and we can kind of etch out where we need to split our wood. And that way, when we go to set this up to split, we know exactly where our saw blade is going to rest. Alright, so i got this sitting up here. Now, we don't need much. Our saw blade is about three quarters of an inch wide. So this is what we're going to do. We're just going to split down to our knife blade. Perfect. I'm going to do the same with this one right here. find my uh, pre-cut where I etched it out and we're just going down to the blade width we're moving our blade now what we need to do guys let me move some of this bark material out of our way so we get a better view here we're gonna take our blade and we're going to put it in a slot that we just hammered out. Careful now, your buck saw blade is very sharp. I mean, we're talking razor sharp. Now, what we've done, we've added it right here to our eyelet. Now, you can take a twig. I use hardwood on this one. And make yourself some little plugs. And just slide right in, kind of like a little wooden bolt. All right? Tighten up your blade a little bit. So there's pressure on that just like that. I'm going to do the exact same with this side here. And then once we have that, guys, we got the basic of our saw blade right there. Now I'm looking down, trying to look at the notches and make sure that everything's level. We're going to take our, our cross member, and I've notched the corner of mine just a little bit just so it sits better in my notch. We want that nice and tight, just like that. Now, when we put our windlass up here, it will draw these arms together, uprights together, which makes our saw blade tight. Now, what we got, which is over here, I've got paracord. Now, what I've done, I've got a long piece of paracord. I put a square knot in it, and I just looped it together. I got two cords, basically, what I've done. Just made one big cord. Now, I'm just going to drape it over our uprights, just like this. And you really want your cross member, yes, it's hit and miss on this. If it's done correctly, your cross member should be a little over midway of your buck saw. All right, but you're really just checking it. You, you know, you tighten up your windlass. Let's see if I can use this same one. Drop this down a little bit. Uh, you make this is your windlass here, just a piece of wood. And it'll go in between here just like this. And you just tighten it up. 
and this is causing the pressure to tighten up on your buck saw. All right. So what I'm looking for, guys, that's a little loose. I'm looking for rocking. So I'm going to make this one list just a little bit longer or stretch it down a little bit. So when you're looking at your buck saw, if you tighten, you want to be able to rock. You want to sit there and try to move it and see if it will rock. Rocking means that the leg will go up and this one will go down. It's kind of sloppy. It bounces around with you. You don't want that. All right. You want it nice and tight. So usually with rockage, and it will happen when your wood starts drying out, you just tighten it up again with your windlass, and you check it. Yeah, that's stout. All right, so I've got excess right here. Now what I could do is I could trim this off to make it a little bit nicer, you know, more uniform and stuff, or I can leave it this length, and I can also put me a couple more notches up because now when I go to cut a piece of wood, you see how much clearance I've got. If I need to move this cross member up to cut larger wood or things like that, I can because my buck saw has a longer blade. Now this is far from over. Remember, we split these ends. So now we've got to do what's known as whipping. Let's see, here's what to do. This is to take your length of cord. I'm using the number 36 bank line. I got the long end down there and I've got a shorter end right here. See, this is my short end. I'm just putting a loop right here and now this is the fun part I'm gonna wrap this cordage all the way around my buck saw just to add tensile strength well not tensile strength just to tighten up that split that we split to um, get our buck saw blade in there and what this does guys this helps it from splitting further up your upright so what you do is you just keep on tying and basically you're causing loops just like that kind of like if you wrap up cordage uh, if you've got a hunk of cord, uh, hunk, hank of cordage and you're just trying to wrap it all up I do it all the time it's the exact same process and you're just keeping enough pressure on it that way it stays nice and tight and then when you're done we will pull this cordage out and it'll bite down here and it'll make everything nice and tight. I'll show you here in just a second. All right, so once we start getting towards the end here, you just notice how our loop's right there. We keep on running our whip around. We're gonna stick it through our eyelet of that loop. All right, and we're gonna hold on to our loose end. Now, we still have this end of that whipping loop. And we're gonna use our Leathermans here. We're gonna bite down on this. I'm gonna pull that loop through. This is hard and it's tight as we can just like that now that has caused pressure around this upright season this up now I want you to just take your knife dress off your uh, excess cordage there just makes it look all nice and you do the other side the exact same way So that's the construction of our buck saw, but I'm not happy with this windlass piece right here. It's just short. I want it just a little bit longer, and I'm afraid if I keep on mashing down, it might actually pop out of my slot. Either way, I could make it just a little bit longer if I want to. You know, it's sturdy. So let's go ahead and cut some material with this. Now I've read the comments for years and so have I. I've even said the comments, dude I carry a folding saw, I'm ready to rock and roll. I don't need those big old buck saws. Alright, let's say you're cutting something larger. You know how long it's going to take to cut this with this? A very long time. This is a very good, this is the Corona saw. This is one I've been using for a very long time now. Um, I've got no complaints of the saw. But the buck saw cuts the same with less effort because all you're doing is using the weight of the saw. You're not cranking down on it compared to this. And you've got a lot to cut, that's why. So, this is a larger piece of wood here, and this is what we're going to be cutting.
All right. So that is that. Much faster, much easier, less energy is actually used in using the buck saw to cut stuff like that. And like I said, we could have actually notched this up higher so it had a more depth to cut this all the way through without rotating the log. And all we had it done was move our windlass up and move our notch up. This still would have worked the same. All right, guys, so that is the buck saw. Again, this is not my idea. The buck saw is something I learned how to manufacture before I went to the Pathfinder course. But who did I watch? Well, one was Corporal's Corner. Should be a video popped up there for you guys, an instructional by Corporal's Corner, who is also an instructor at the Pathfinder course. He breaks down the buck saw, how to construct it and all that stuff very well. Multiple videos there. If you're not subscribed to him, definitely go check him out. Guys, I will continue to promote these guys from Pathfinder Course, some of the guys I was in the course with, and also the instructors. You'll see lists and links in my description all the time. There is links for a Pooter Stomper, there's Adaptable Survival, there's Dave Canterbury himself, there is Corpus Corner, there are guys that I went to the course with, Mike Bobos, Martial Arts and Bushcraft, uh, his brother, Bobos Bushcraft. You guys will see these links. These are guys I do support because I was there in the shit with them there you go and i saw what they are capable of doing they have proved more than words could ever say of who they are and the abilities that they have so yeah these types of people i like to hang around with these types of people i consider friends these people i know i can talk to about stuff and they do understand especially when it comes to keyboard warriors there's a big difference from doing things outdoors and reading about it so i encourage everybody to work on stuff like that that saw blade i bought off amazon i think 10 bucks i carried around I mean, this thing's getting some rust and everything else on it because it's a carbon blade uh still works very well then i'm using paracord as the top of the windlass guys those that want to that have tried this out i wasn't attacking anybody's video i just want to do the breakdown of this and again guys like i said I'm not here to teach what Pathfinder School teaches. I'm here to teach you what I know. And I want to do this video because I'm seeing a lot of people trying to replicate my video. And they're, hey, CFP, look, I've done it. And the, the buck saw um, is wobbling. The, the blade itself is wobbling, stuff like that. And that's quite all right. I'm not laughing at anybody. Um, I wanted to do an actual structural video so you can actually look at the construction of this. You should not have any rocking in your buck saw at all. It should not rock. It should not bounce and bow. This blade should not be bowing and stuff. I've seen videos where instead of cutting notches, they've tied it. They've actually had the piece of wood sticking across and they've tied it to it. And the whole thing, you pick it up, it drops and stuff like that. That's not a correct construction of a buck saw blade. So this is, and I want you guys to definitely check it out. Um, to Pathfinder School, uh, Self-Reliance Outfitters. You guys rock, you know that. I really enjoyed myself there at the scout training course. Um, I wish I could have gone out there and done the advanced course, but right now, what the schedule is, and since we got some new stuff rolling into the country, we're sitting still right here. Anyway guys, like I said, we're not here to teach what they're teaching. They have their own curriculum, stuff like that. This is not something I'll be teaching in our, in our uh, course down here in Florida. Um, this is something that's good to know. I might demonstrate it for everybody in the basic course, but it's not going to be a requirement on learning how to do because our basic course is basic survival. It's not easy. It's actually very difficult, but I want to teach you basic stuff, just like we'll be using a folding saw in the basic course. But this is something, one of the things that we'll be demonstrating, same with the bow drill fire. We'll be demonstrating it during the basic course, but it's not a requirement. You know, I'll be just be teaching you how to. Uh, when it comes to advanced course, the advanced course is tough. And we got about 13 miles of trekking we have to do. Yeah, it's, it's rough. All right, guys. Till next time, like I said, this is just an instructional video for you guys. Definitely go check out the description below in, in the links of the video. To all my friends and stuff, the guys that I enjoyed working with up there at the Pathfinder course, check out their videos, get subscribed, and watch their videos. They got a lot of great information. We're, we as preppers like to think about just prepping food, power, stuff like that. You need outdoor survival skills. If something was to happen... Do you know how to survive? This is something we really need to be working on. All right, guys. Talk to you later. You want me out? Right here with me, man. Okay. Tell us I'm, when you're live, brother. I'm live. Quiet.
All right, guys, here we are at the Pathfinder School with Survival Living, just patched the intermediate class. If you want some good information, check his channel out on YouTube for sure. Good job, man. All right. Perfect. I can edit it. I can cut right there, man. Asshole instructor's on. Me and Dave. Good job. Fucking Sean, man.